Hello guys, welcome to another health video. Today we have a very unique one because today we're going to go over some stuff that uh, you might actually have. One of these is a very common uh, shock that over 3 million or over like 2 million people have them worldwide per year, worldwide basically. And so after all this, you guys are going to see and actually now know all the symptoms and be professional at all these different shocks. I got this off of a Google because I research him. Yes, I'm only 13, I'm not a real doctor. So here is just a warning. If you don't like someone talking to you about health and you're worried about it and you don't, you want an actual professional, don't listen to me because all this stuff could be very, very wrong. Alright, this is just a new content I'm trying to come up with and this is one of them. Because I feel like this might be able to save your life. If this is still, uh, well, valid, you know, valid symptoms and valid causes and valid shocks. So I just want you guys to know, if, if these are wrong, don't take it from me. I don't want to be the reason why you're not here because you're scared about your own life. I'm sorry. So if you're someone who's scared, and, and, you, and you want an actual professional, I'm a 13 year old kid who does research and is a hypochondriac. So I'm giving you a warning, do not pay attention to this. Go to an actual professional and not me, because I don't know what I'm doing. Hell, go to your doctor if anything. Anaphylactic shock. Now anaphylactic shock is actually a very, is actually the most dangerous shock ever. It is probably the most common shock to get. This is when you're allergic to food, and we'll go over some of the food that is most, I mean, any food really you're allergic to, even smoke can possibly cause this, I think. Maybe not so much smoke, but food. So any food, you know, fish, or milk, or any of those, we'll get to those, and I'll tell you which ones. I can just tell you, fish definitely will, and all these other ones, but there are less uncommon. I mean, even anaphylactic shock, hell, is even rare to get. But if you're allergic and you eat something, that's what happens. So, it is the most dangerous shocks and well-known well one. It has real, as, uh, why did I not edit that? I was supposed to put, it has really bad results. I mean, it does have really bad results. I'm sorry, I was in a rush to finish this. So it has really bad results if you eat food and you get this. It could cause death in just a matter of hours or minutes if it's not taken care of. You have to get an EpiPen in your leg to stop the swelling and to stop the um, anaphylactic because it like just tranquilizes all that anaphylactic stuff I think and it like I know it does stop anaphylactic because the stuff in there like takes out the anaphylactic and stuff the like really bad toxins so yeah it will lead to death. So swelling up the conjectiva which is like your eyes and the top of your eyes, a runny nose, swelling of the lips, tongue, or throat, heart and vascular, faster, slow heart rate, low blood pressure. Now, skin, you will have hives. Most likely, you'll have either hives, itchiness, or maybe all those plus flushing. Another one is pelvic pain. You might have some of your pelvic pain. Another one is the central nervous system. So this is a very important part of the brain. Lightheadedness. Loss of consciousness, which is basically the brain, is the central nervous system as well. So lightheadedness, loss of consciousness, confusion, headache, and anxiety. Now anxiety can also be because you're worrying about it. If you're someone who worries about anaphylactic shock, if you don't have any of these other symptoms and you just have anxiety, it's probably because you're stressing yourself out. And if you're, if you don't know, your upper lip is supposed to be smaller than your, your, I mean your upper lip is supposed to be smaller than your, you know, your lower lip. Your lower lip is supposed to be big. Now, like, really big, like it looks like it got hit in the head with a baseball bat, then yeah, you're probably, you gotta get that checked out. Now, not always is a big lip sign of that. It could be from dehydration, it could be from, you know, just infections of the lip, um, which is a chiliitis or something like that. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but it, like, it's an infection of the lips. So yeah, anxiety could be because you're basically worrying about it and you're getting yourself so worked up to the point where you have anxiety. So don't always think that. But again, if you want to go get checked out for anaphylactic, call the ambulance or go to the ambulance or the hospital yourself to get that checked out. Next up is respiratory. Shortness of breath, wheeze or strider, which is like a weird noise whenever you breathe. It's hoarseness, it's hoarseness, 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 which is like, your throat, you don't really sound too good. You're very hoarse. 
pain with swallowing. So if you have no good, you have like trouble swallowing after you eat. It's either because you have um, gas, well, GERD, which is gastroesophageal for reflex disease, or it could be just because you have like some, you know, trouble swallowing. But again, you have this after food, it could possibly be an anaphylactic shock. You can't always count your chickens before they hatch. So don't always say it's not something whenever it could possibly be it. Next up is cough. So again, cough could be because you're choking, something's stuck, or anaphylactic shock, or just because you got a cough. A lot of people do that. Same thing with GERD, you could do that. So, yeah, gastrointestinal, crampy abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. So if you have vomiting, and their and their lips are big, and they're and they can't talk right, that's probably gonna be anaphylactic shock right off the bat. Loss of bladder control. So you might end up peeing yourself, and that's something that. I mean, any, I mean, you could be too nervous to the point where you do that, but it's always good to get that checked out to make sure that ain't it. So, big everything. So, big lips, swelling of the tongue, swelling of the face, and most extreme is swelling of the throat. You can see this kid's eyes are, like, swelling really, really bad. You can see his cheeks are a little bit, you know, swelled up, too. You can also see this guy's lip is big, and I mean big. Um... And yeah, you can really see. So what is the food it mostly comes from? Can come from any food you're allergic to, and it's actually very rare for this. I mean, anaphylactic shock is not something you're gonna get every time you eat it. First, you have to be allergic to it. Second, you have to have a severe allergic reaction. And if you've already had one, all you have to do is stab an EpiPen in you and boom, you're done. Foods like milk and almonds, AKA they're nuts, and it occurs right after you eat it. Most likely, it will happen right after you eat, or in severe cases, it can even happen a few hours, or even a, basically a few minutes or a few hours after anything. Um, so yeah, that can really be something. Uh, hold on guys, I'm busy. Alright, so next. It occurs right after you eat it, like I was said. So, just make sure you check the ingredients, parents and kids, before you eat something, because it could contain nuts and milk. And if you're allergic to dairy, you might just get stomach pain and stuff. But if you're allergic to it, there's a possibility, or, or nuts, or almond, almonds, which are basically nuts. You could have pretty bad allergic reaction. Cardiogenic, our next one up here. Now, some of these, I don't even know how to pronounce the name of, so that's why I include ones I know much about, because these are some of them. Heart attack is the major cause of cardiogenic shock, and mo it may occur due to coronary heart disease, aka CH, wait, yeah, CHD, I think that's what it is. Now, coronary heart disease is, is a very bad thing, alright? Coronary heart disease is a very, very, very serious disease. It's probably one of the most dangerous and extreme diseases out there. Another reason you can have it is arrhythmias. So arrhythmias is like, you know, your heart's not that well, and you kind of have like a, a abnormal heartbeat, which means it's very high. So that could also cause it. And then it says here, rupture of heart valve. So I think it might be uh, one of these valves over here that will rupture that can cause um, you know, cardiogenic shock, and this mainly will occur when you're not getting enough blood, so yeah. So, cardiogenic shock, death rate, and symptoms. So, it's 70 to 90% for the death rate. So, this is something you get it, you most likely will die from. Maybe you'll get, maybe if God, you know, you know, it's not, if you have luck, and you got a lot of prayers for you, you might come out of this a lot. But 70 to 90% of death rate is a pretty... Um, not so trustworthy percentage, but rapid weak heartbeat, rapid breathing, low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, sweating, weak pulse, confusion, restlessness, fatigue, power of the skin, chest pain, and shortness of breath. Those are all the signs that you could possibly be suffering from car cardiogenic shock or you might be going into that or you might actually be while you're watching this video or your loved member might be going into this. So it only really happens with heart disease. So it's like anaphylactic shock that which only really happens when you're allergic to something and it's a severe allergic reaction. Hypovolemic shock caused by little to caused by too little blood volume. 
What is hypovolemic shock? Loss of more than a fifth of blood blood plasma. So there are some causes by this that you guys are gonna find I found pretty interesting. Leading to reduced tissue perfusion. This makes it impossible for the heart to pump a, a significant amount of blood to the body, which can lead to an organ failure. Because in order for your organs to run well, you have to have good blood flow, and you have to have good blood flow to those organs. And if those organs don't do well, and there's a lack of blood to them, it will, and most likely will, cause you to die. Because in order, and you know, your organs are really important parts, like your brain is part of one. Your brain is an organ. Your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, um, all those are parts and they have a lot of blood to them. And if they lose those blood and they don't get a lot of blood, that can basically cause, you know, not, you basically bleed to death. So, they, we'll just get to the symptoms and we'll move on from here. Anxiety, confusion, again, so many shocks will include anxiety. So, if your anxiety you think is caused by this, don't always jump to conclusion saying it's hypovolemic shock, it's cardiogenic shock, it's anaphylactic shock, because it's not always going to be what you think it is. Anxiety is a whole nother problem, all right, when it comes to, like, worry. You worrying about something, is it going to stop it from happening? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I have anxiety like that, too. So, another one is low or no urine, urine output. So, you might have a little urine, or might no urine, no urine at all. Now that could be because you either have a blood clot in the lungs, or your organs aren't rock. You know that is kind of what it has there, organ failure. But again, it could also be caused by COVID, which could damage your organs as well. But that's a whole other video. We'll be doing symptoms of that on. Although it's almost over, let's hope to God it's over. I hate COVID. I think it should be buried 10 million feet down in the ground with a molded hot lava. Anyway, pale skin and scarilla. I think that's how you say it. Trichardia, tri trichicardia, trichardia, greater than 100 beats per minute. So this could be possibly like I've had heartbeats of over 200. Uh, that's because it was a workout for me to get up to the third floor, away from the first to the third floor to get to my math class last year. Long story short, I'm still here, am I? But a heart rate of like 200 and some. 250 or 100 and you're someone that's old and it's like 200 it's most likely gonna kill you okay it could be because you have arrhythmia or trachycardia as on here now 100 beats really ain't that much 110 20 30 40 in my opinion ain't that much but for some people and doctors and actual professionals which is not me i said at the beginning don't watch this if you want professionals to tell you if you're good or not um so like i don't know more than they do but anyway, I'm just trying to tell you that it's okay to have a greater heartbeat than 100. But if it's like 199 and above 200, please go get it checked. I don't want to be the reason why you're dead, you know, because I don't want to be the reason that it tells you it's okay to have a hundred and some heartbeat. I'm just saying a hundred's okay, but 200, that's going a little bit too far. Now, dizziness is any symptom really, but I know I'm like trying, I'm trying to make this sound less scary because I know shock is a scary experience. I don't know for me exactly, but I do know because I've watched many people on YouTube have it, and I can I can just guarantee you it is hard as heck to have that. I can just guarantee you that. I've never had an allergic reaction. I hope I don't. I'm not making fun of people that do. I feel bad for them. I wish I could find a way of stopping their allergic reaction, but they're always born with them. So yeah, you could later on not get them, but yeah, dizziness is a sign of it. Loss of consciousness, low blood pressure, abdominal pain, dysphagnia, I think that's how you say it, weak pulse, clammy skin, hematitis for internal bleeding. So, internal bleeding is also um, another side of this. Symptoms can include eternal, eternal bleeding. So, eternal bleeding can be one of the causes and can be one of the symptoms. So you gotta look out for that. And Melina stools. I don't. I don't know what. I think that means like bleeding stools, or just like a really weird color of stool. So if you have that type of stool, you gotta go get that checked out. And if they have all these other symptoms all together, and that, and internal bleeding, it most likely will be hypovolemic hypovolemic shock, or it could be like a, a AAA, a domino aortic aneurysm, or much more. 
So causes of hypovolemic shock is the causes include blood loss through deep cuts or injury. So that's why you can lose plasma. Is plasma is basically blood plasma is basically plasma, okay? And you need that in order to survive and have good health and have good oxygen level and good blood level and good organs that don't give out on you. Another one is internal bleeding. As I just said, internal bleeding can be a symptom and a cause of hypovolemic shock. So severe burns leading to loss of plasma. So if you have severe burns, like first degree, I don't think it would be that bad, but second degree, three degree burns could possibly cause that as well. So go get that, really check that out. Go call the ambulance immediately whenever they get this because it might be too late whenever you call them. Loss of electrolytes and water through diarrhea and vomiting. So, I get, if you vomit, you most likely have food poisoning or a stomach bug or the flu or COVID anymore but again you don't really know the shot you don't really know this uh cause until you really know the cause so me telling you this is what you have that's not true so yeah i'm just letting you guys know through diarrhea and vomiting i can't neurogenic shock what is neurogenic shock is a life-threatening condition caused by irregular blood circulation in the body Symptoms of neurogenic shock, skin is cold and damp, breathing that is labored, lips or nails that are blue, and cover low blood pressure, anxiety, pain in the chest, and dizziness. Why is neurogenic shock serious? Neurogenic sho shock is extremely dangerous because it can cause your blood pressure to drop drastically and suddenly and can lead to irreversible damage to your body tissues. Now, sepsis shock. Sepsis shock is, is basically caused by sepsis. And you'll mainly get that from either a bacterial infection or an infection that gets into a cut that is not treated. To treat that, you mainly need to get that checked out, get that fixed up, that cuts, boom, you're ready to go. But, sep but getting a bacterial infection takes like multiple IVs, possibly. It takes, you know, a lot of like water to really, you know, keep the dehydration down. So... Sepsis is very serious. It happens when a bacterial infection that goes untreated or unnoticed, or a cut that gets a bacteria bacteria in it, it can be very serious because it can lead to sepsis shock. So again, not every cut will lead to it. If you get that taken care of, keep pressure on it to keep the bleeding from going down. Again, bleeding from a cut is, is something you're always going to happen. But if you do get bacteria in it, it can cause an infection. And that infection could be one and only, the one and only bad one, sepsis. So I don't suggest you have that. So symptoms of sepsis shock is noticeably lower amounts of urine. So again, that could be because you're dehydrated, your kidneys ain't right. Or it could be because, well, you just, you simply just don't care about yourself, I guess. Another one is acute confusion. So if you keep having confusion after confusion after confusion, that could be why. Another one is dizziness, where you basically are like walking very goofily, and that could be why. Severe problems breathing. Now, severe problem. Stop. What do you want? I want a pepperoni pizza. So severe problems breathing is another very bad symptom of it because if you don't breathe well, you're getting less oxygen than what you need. And if you go with the oxygen for too long, you might develop brain damage. And by the time they try to get you, not, no, don't get you, well, by the time they try to heal you, you won't be healed. You'll basically be brain dead. Severe problems breathing. I just said that. Blue discoloration of the digits of the, yeah, or lips. So basically you have discoloration of the lips. So if your lips are discolored, that could be another symptom of it. And they could be very, very serious. High fever or chill. So if you have a high fever, it could be.
office. Sorry guys, so hi, my mom was calling, I didn't know if she would give us her address out to the people that are ordering the pizza, so I'm sorry. So high fever or chills? High fever would be like 104. 104 up will be severe sepsis shock. So severe sepsis will have a high fever or chills. Again, chills could be a bacterial infection, which is not going to, sometimes bacterial infections won't lead to sepsis. It could be like gastroenteritis. But high fever or chills with both of those and all these other problems, or maybe just those two plus, or you know, like really, really like sweating can be basically sepsis shock. Now, not always is treatment, you know, with like sepsis is going to not lead to sepsis shock. Sometimes people might not do their best. I'm not saying people don't, but I'm saying sometimes it might actually just randomly happen. But you have to have a bacterial infection or something that cause that or might may cause that. So high fever or chills, basically if there's a temperature of 104, they could be going into sepsis shock. And that is if they have a cut or they had bacterial infection that they have you take they they'll act right and you take your temperature of your husband your hubby, or your wifey, or your mom or dad, or your brother or sister, and they have like a high fever of 104, they're not acting right, they're sweating, they're like not acting like themselves, they're dizzy, they can't you know, breathe right, their lips are purple, and they have a high fever of chills. Again, that could be a whole nother life threatening condition, but on here it could potentially be, you know, high fever or chills. So high fever or chills could be a cause of sepsis shock and can lead to death. A very serious life threatening death. I'm just, I mean, every death is life threatening, but I'm saying this could be a really painful one for you and for your loved one. So, a high fever, 104 chills, and you have to have that at the hospital, their doctor will take care of them. But at home, you get them in the car and you go because that could potentially be sepsis shock. Now, intense body pain. Now, if they have intense body pain or not, you know, they're in agonizing pain and they got high fever or chills, or Heck, extreme cases of it, all these symptoms together, plus that one, you know, that could be a, that's an automatic, you're going to the hospital because you're not being, you're not doing so well. And I'm just saying, you have intense body pain, that's, that's, and no matter what it's caused for, it's an automatic go to the hospital, I don't want to see you die type moment. I mean, literally. Now, fast heart rate. So, fast heart rate, again, can be arrhythmia or, or trachycardia. But again, on here, like now, it could be a sepsis shock symptom. Even if it, in extreme rare cases, you can have all these symptoms, plus that one. That's, I told you, no matter what, if all these symptoms is what, you're, is what you're basically seeing with your own eyes and what they're feeling. And if they have enough power to even at, tell you, you know, answer your question. Is that all that do you have any other symptom? You, if, they, if you ask them all their symptoms and they list these all, and that they even can because when you're in shock, you're out of breath, you're dying, you're, you're basically gonna die if you're not taken care of fast enough. It's not something you can say, you know what, you're fine, just head up to bed, I'll see you in the morning because heck, you might not be able to see them in the morning if they have steps in shock or, you know, cardi or, you know, cardiogenic shock or hypovolemic shock or anaphylactic shock. You can't just say no to all these and say, hey, you don't have this. You gotta be actual sure because they might wake up looking like someone beat them to a pulp. Okay, so fast heart rate is gonna be basically another symptom. Another one, rapid breathing. So that could be because of the fast heart rate and because of the intense body pain, but if they have rapid breathing, it's <laughs> then you're and all these symptoms plus that, you take them to the hospital. I'm telling you, you have all these symptoms together, you got to take it to the hospital. You might lose the person. Another one is a rash. As you can see, I included a picture on the side of the rash that you could possibly have with this. Now, again, you're not always going to have a rash. These are symptoms of it. Heck, maybe sepsis shock of your loved one could go unnoticed. All right, so... It's mainly going to be caused by a cut that isn't taken care of fast enough, or it's a cut that gets really bad infect infected. Or you could potentially be caused by a bacterial infection that goes unnoticed or untreated. That could be either because you're too lazy to take them, or you just don't think there's something wrong with them, or you want to take them, but they keep disagreeing with you on it. 
or basically you just they're acting like their normal selves and you wouldn't really guess anything but really deep down inside they could be either trying to keep that pain in and agonizing stuff in just to you know not make you worry or it could be potentially you know kill them i mean it most likely will i'd say if it isn't taken care of fast enough but again these are all rare yes one is very common i think it was the hypovolemic shock or something but Again, you have to have what is required to have this. Like sepsis shock, you have to either have a bacterial infection or sepsis. Or not sepsis, but uh, you have to have at least sepsis shock, then severe sepsis, then just sepsis shock. But again, to have all of those, you have to have sep you have to have bacterial infection or worse, or not worse, but a cut. Or you have to have for you know cardiogenic shock as we went over see look neurogenic shock you have to have a regular blood circulation in the body and if you could keep yourself warm in the and like you know i mean of course in the winter time you're not always going to be promised that because it's cold out but again you're not always going to be promised to have these these are just types of them and again see blood loss causes you have to have either blood loss through deep cuts injury and you have to have either eternal bleeding severe burns or you don't have to be dehydrated. If you drink enough water, bang, you got no dehydration. That's it for that one. Cardiogenic shock. You have to have, well, you have to have, wait. Cardiogenic shock. You have to have something wrong with your heart. See, yeah, may occur due to coronary heart disease. That's a very rare one to have. And anaphylactic shock, you have to eat something you're most allergic to. So yeah, anaphylactic shock is probably the most common one to get. But if you know what you can and cannot eat, you'll be perfectly fine. So you might have had anxiety throughout this entire video, but now your anxiety is free because I told you you probably don't have these. But again, there's always going to be a possibility you or your family member might have them. So just because they're here today doesn't mean they're going to be able to cheer you on tomorrow. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this video helpful beside all these anxiety type symptoms you might have which might cause your anxiety to go through the roof again. But I'm just telling to tell you, I hope you enjoyed. More health videos coming tonight.